evolve. See, we, we throw out the scriptures again. Once we go away from what that clear teaching of scriptures, we get into the billions of years, the evolution, Adam was the first primate cause, I, and we just get into all kinds of false teaching. Right. Once right, we so, walk from the scriptures, we're in trouble. All right, so, what, so how do those, who do they believe about the serpent seed theory, how this hybrid race survived the flood? Okay, um, what they'll do, we'll come back to the Nephilim in a little okay. bit then. You know, but, well, see, just go where you want to go there. I mean, Okay, well, what happens here with the serpent seed, see what they're saying? She's saying they evolved. <laughs> well, not exactly. Well, she does mention evolution in the book. Now, how much she goes into it, I don't know if she believes that we came from apes or just mankind themselves evolved, whatever. I'm not real sure. She probably believes going. we came from the Anunnaki's, from the aliens, the way this woman's going. Well, see what happens now. Since we have the flood, of course, there's people that are mentioning this and saying, well, the flood came to destroy this wicked race. Well, yes, the flood came to destroy wickedness, but not this race. Because you have to realize not only uh, did the... Um, entire human being. And this was Seth's lineage, too, that died in the race. It wasn't just Cain's lineage. All but Noah was spared. I mean, all, they were all destroyed. Noah's the only one there. And even the beasts, the creeping files, and the birds were all destroyed. So it wasn't for this idea of the giants that were being told, you see. It's, it's just not that. But what they're saying, well, okay, we're going to take an evangelical position. The flood destroyed Cain's lineage. So now they have to say, well, how did these angels come back for today? How are the Nephilim returning? So they come up with at least two theories. And she points out one of these theories anyway. But they, here's what they do. One of, one of her theories is, well, she's saying, well, Ham, the son of Noah, was really not the son of Noah. He was just a stepson. He was actually the son of a pharaoh. And then she connects us back to the satanic lineage of Cain. And she said, this is how it survived in the flood. See, this is... Um, She's saying this is how it came through. You know, now remember, God's here to destroy all this race, according to them. He wants to get rid of this. And he just happened to miss Ham. I mean, see what they're trying to do to our God? Make him not even supreme or not knowledgeable enough to know that Ham was a hybrid himself? And he spares Ham? I, again, it just goes into such false and weird and so unscriptural doctrine when you start in these ideas. But anyway, we go to the Bible again. Genesis 5.32 says, Noah begat Sham, Ham, and Japheth. He is not a stepson. And of course, she pulls on this. She's, um, Dr. Pugh says, well, she found this in Masonic literature. Well, again, where do we give that as credence? The Bible is the final authority. <laughs> well, it, it, it's one thing if the Masons are, are perverting the scriptures, but Christians ought not. Yeah, and, and we really ought not. You know, we know they're perverting it a lot for their whole little for their whole thing. But since when do we want to know what they have to say and how they're perverting it and using it? And like I said, why the do we adopt that as our belief? The scriptures clearly says, like I said, Genesis five, and then it's repeated. In case we missed it the first time around, yeah. it repeats it the next chapter in Genesis six, six ten. It says Noah begat three sons: Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And, of course, she's, well, this Dr. Joyce, she's, oh, a stepson still considered a son in the scriptures. And she says, look at Jesus. He was Joseph's son. I did. I went to Matthew 1, 16. It says, Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus. It never said Joseph begat Jesus because that's not true. No, no, they never said that. So, you know, they have to try to make it look scriptural, but they have to change the scriptures. And, of course, like I mentioned, it specifically states that Noah began Ham. So this theory is false. So well, then they said, well, the other thing that could have happened is that um, what happened was it was a homosexual relationship. When Noah dr became drunk and he was in there and Ham went in, he performed a homosexual act on him. And because of this, the serpent seed crossed over. Well, first of all, I'll say this. Before saying oh, Noah was wicked, we have to realize that the flood had just taken place the atmospheric um, pressure and all had changed. And as Noah began to be a husband, he evidently had no idea what would happen because of the fermentation. Up to this point, there wasn't the rain and all this. Yeah, and The so fermentation we, wasn't happening as quick as it happened after the flood, for sure. Right. And so, I mean, so we're not going to just up and say he's a wicked person because, first of all, God had just told us he was perfect in his generation. Right. And he had just seen the entire world destroyed for wickedness. And it tells us in the New Testament he's a preacher of righteousness. So exactly. there. It didn't, bother say, it didn't say he was a drunk. 
That's right. And so what they're saying is now, so they have um, Ham coming in and seeing him, and they say, oh, he performed a homosexual act. Again, let's get back to the scriptures. There's no indication here. And it also, Ham had just seen the whole world destroyed too. So I don't think he was ready to out and out commit sin. Uh, He may have been immature in what he had done by seeing. He should have really covered Noah. But he went out and he told his brothers. He left them in there uncovered. So what the other boys did, they took a garment they walked backward and covered him. Now, here again, let's, let's just pretend we'll go along with him for just one minute and say, well, okay, Genesis 9.22 does mean a homosexual act. Now, it's also mentioned in 23, so let's read it that way. The boys, um, Shem and Japheth, covered up Noah's homosexual act with the garment. You see, when you start taking what they're saying, if that word means homosexual act, then when they covered him up, they covered him up with a garment. I mean, they're just twisting scripture and scripture and scripture. It's, it's amazing to me how they'll say, you know, this is what it says, but that's not what it means. You know, they want to convince us. You, know, you I know you just read that, but what you just read is not really what it means. It really means this. Yeah, and then they're if trying to say. Tell, anybody ever tells us that, we need to go, you know, as good Bereans, you know, the word of God means what it says and says what it means. And don't try to tell me what it's saying because I'm smart enough to figure out what it says. And it's pretty simple. Yeah, and then they're saying it's because of this that this passed through the descendants. What they happened to miss was Ham already had the four descendants. So they it couldn't have passed on to the descendants because they had already been born. So again, that whole theory is just thrown out. Go to the scriptures and it all falls out. It falls you know, it, it just none of it's right. This woman's book sounds really like the worst thing I've ever heard. It's hard for me to believe she's she's a Baptist woman from Georgia writing all this. But I have seen bits and pieces of this same story that she's writing throughout lots of different ministries, Kathy, So it, in a lot of these books. So I know that it's out there quite readily. Um, so what about how – so they're saying that's how it survived the flood after the flood was because of what Ham did to, uh, to Noah? Right, it's either either he was only a stepson, which again the scriptures say is not true, or he did it with the homosexual act and that survived. So this now they have it carrying over because they needed to come past the flood because we know it was all that race was destroyed, you know, with the flood. So they have to, this is their way of trying to carry it over. Uh, okay, so wow. All right, so are you ready to go to? Uh, many people falsely claim that Jews came from this satanic lineage. I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of racism, and uh, which people use scripture for racism. They use it for anti-Semitism. Um, what does the Bible say about this? Okay, well, one verse they use to try to prove this idea that Jews are from Satan or even just the satanic bloodline and leave the Jews out of it. They're just saying, you know, like um, the royal family or whatever, they're saying they came from this bloodline. Right. And they go to John eight forty four, where Jesus says, Ye of your, are of your father the devil. And it's, oh, okay, now we have proof. Jesus said there's a satanic bloodline. Well, again, let's go to the scriptures. He did say that. But we need to look at the entire setting. And as I pointed out before on another program, a text without a context is a pretext. So we really need to look at the whole context here. And when we do, a completely different picture arises. Because in this chapter, we see that Jesus is talking about his father, who is God. And the Jews ask who his father was. And he says, I am from above, ye are from beneath. And of course, as he was speaking to them, there were many there that started to believe on Jesus. And he said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, some of the Jews said, well, we be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? So Jesus went on to explain. He said, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and then he adds, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Now, we'll we'll jump down to verse 37. So Jesus says clearly to these Jews, I know ye are Abraham's seed. He's just recognized that they are coming from Abraham. They're not from a satanic bloodline. They're not from Cain's lineage. They're Abraham's seed. But then he went on to reveal to them, As he was speaking, you can see he's referring to an earthly father and a spiritual father. He's saying we have two fathers. Abraham was their earthly father, and he had recognized that, but he added that their works were showing that their spiritual father was Satan. And the Jews said, oh, we only have one father, even God. They got his message. 
They knew exactly what he was saying. They just said, we're Abraham's seed. Now they're saying, we only have one father, God. 